Senator, it's good to have you tonight. Thanks very much for being Thank here. You. Your reaction from uh, Joe Scarborough. You know, that's typical, unfortunately, of what we're seeing from the left-wing mob. And the reason they're so hysterical and unhinged and irrational and spewing lies, almost everything I heard there was an utter, total lie. The reason is, I won't bow down to them. I won't do what they tell me to do. I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to be canceled. I refuse to bow down to the mob. And they are just literally losing their minds because I won't do as I'm told to do. But I've got news for them. I answer to the people of Missouri. I don't answer to the left-wing mob. And it's time we had more people in this country who stood up and said, I'm not going to take my directions from the mob. It's unbelievable, really, what, what is taking place. I mean, it, it, it does feel like communist China. And the media is driving the bus on all of that. Your wife and your baby were threatened. Democrats demanding your expulsion from the Senate, wanting to add you to the FBI's no-fly list. I mean, it just keeps going on. You lost donors. You lost the book deal. What do you believe is at the root of all of this? Well, it's a desire by the left to try and silence all opposition. You know, they talk about unity now. Joe Biden talks about unity. They don't want unity. They want control. They want total and complete control, and they want to eliminate all opposition. They want to shut it down, silence anybody, any speech that they don't agree with. And Maria, we've just got to stand up and say no to that. I mean, the, the First Amendment is, a, is something that all Americans believe in. It's where we've got to take our stand. And those of us who have voices have to be strong and stand up and speak and say, we're not going to bow down to the mob. This is about American democracy, the right of free speech. And I can tell you, I'm not going to be intimidated, I'm not going to be silenced, and I'm not going to back down. Independent journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner Glenn Greenwald joined me on Sunday. Listen to his take. Got to get your take on this. And it's really not being led by Silicon Valley. This obligation, which they pref would prefer not to have to exercise because they'd rather have as many people as possible on their platforms, is really being foisted upon them by a public and a Democratic Party and a bunch of liberal media outlets like the New York Times and CNN and NBC News who demand over and over that they censor more and not less. So do you think it is coming from the Democratic Party? I think there definitely is an alliance between the, the left and the woke capitalists, between big business, big tech and the left. I mean, basically what we have are a bunch of corporate liberals now, Maria, who run the Democratic Party. They love big business because they can control big business. And just look, we're seeing it right now. We've seen it in the last two or three weeks. Big business kicking people off social media, telling folks that they can't, uh, they can't fly, uh, telling folks that they're not welcome to speak, denying them access to venues. I mean, this, this is becoming more and more common. This is why we've got to stand up and say, I'm, I'm not going to bow down to the corporate mob. I'm not going to bow down to the woke mob. And we've got to challenge it. Yeah, I had right around the election, I had one million followers on Twitter. Now I have under 900,000. Really, I mean, literally in a couple of weeks, I don't know what's going on there. But there's this whole other program now, Birdwatch, that Twitter comes out with, where this enables users to comment on people's posts. It's sort of like Wikipedia. And Wikipedia could not be more false. You go on Wikipedia, it's all users putting whatever they want on other users. You've got... They they put parlor out of business. And of course, that on top of all of the bans uh, banning President Trump, you still have uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini there on Twitter. Yeah, this is this new bird watch thing is basically just giving a license to, uh, to to the woke leftists who basically run Twitter already, giving them license to comment and, and run people off the platform who they don't like. But just to go back to a second, Silicon Valley here is totally complicit. Let's, let's be clear about this. It's not as if they don't want to do this. They do want to control speech in America. They 100% want to control speech in America. And the Democrat Party 100% wants them to control speech in America. Yeah. That's why we've got this alliance. The left and big corporations, they want to silence any kind of speech they disagree with. And we've got to say no. What are you going to do about it in terms of Section 230? You know, anybody can get sued if something is in the newspaper, on TV, that is wrong, and yet they can just spew out hate and have all of this, you know, inaccuracy on their, you know, platform, and they are not liable. They can't get sued. You're in the minority. Will you ever be able to overturn Section 230? 
I think we've got to repeal it. I think there's no doubt about it. Section 230 right now is a huge giveaway to these big tech corporations, the most powerful corporations in the history of the world. And the U.S. government is giving them special deals, and the Democrats are all for it. We've got to repeal it. We've got to hold them accountable. We've got to give everyday citizens, you're exactly right, Maria, the ability to go to court. I mean, if you get discriminated against, you ought to have your day in court against these big tech companies. Right. Right now, they're protected, and we've got to change that. So I'm going to fight to repeal it and hold them accountable. What else do you want to say about the policy that you're seeing coming out of the Biden administration? Today, Tony Blinken was confirmed. We know a number of his uh, nominees have been confirmed. What do you say or see in terms of policy that we need to be aware of? Well, what I see is a lot of very pro-corporate very pro endless wars, the same old liberal globalism. It's right back to the failed agenda of the Obama Biden years, where we saw millions of jobs leave this country for China, where we saw the working class wages go flat, where we saw America lose its strength. That's, that's what we're seeing now. It's right back to that. It's back to the liberal globalist agenda, selling out American workers. And I'm not going to go along with it. You know, I, I, I've refused to vote for these nominees who I think are bad choices for these cabinet posts. And I'm going to continue. If, if I think that uh, these, these appointees are not going to actually stand up for America and American workers and protect our interests and keep us strong, I'm not voting for them. And it'll be my privilege to be in opposition and oppose their policies in the U.S. Senate. Well, I think constituents want you in the Senate. Did I read somewhere today that you have decided against running for president in 2024? Oh, I, I've always said, Maria, that I'm, I'm not running for president. It's a privilege to represent the state of Missouri in the United States Senate. I just got elected barely two years ago. There's a lot of work to do, and I look forward to continuing to fight for Missouri every day that I can. Senator, we'll be watching your work. Thanks so much for being here tonight.